concerning news out of Italy, very, very concerning, because one of the leading experts and long-term researcher of Campi Flegrei has said if he had the resources, he would evacuate the area immediately. So in this video, we will look into this. Why is he saying this? What is he expecting? And then there have been just two days ago, two more large earthquakes in the Gulf of Pozzuoli, so in the water. And that's not good because we know if something's happening in the water, the Campi Flegri volcanic area stretches around 100 kilometers. So it's also stretching into the sea. And if some magma would come to the surface, if an eruption would start in the sea, experts are saying that could trigger a tsunami of a height of 30 meters, 100 feet tall, that would roll right towards the coast of Naples. Greater Naples area is an area with more than 3 million people that it's for them, it is impossible to be evacuated in time. And that's why we're monitoring this volcanic area so closely. So what is going on with Campi Flegrei, a super volcano in Italy that is threatening not only this area, but could change the world? If you live in that area, imagine, if you will, the ground beneath your feet, a ticking time bomb, and it's nestled in the scenic vistas of this beautiful area of Italy. It's Campi Flegrei. It's a sleeping giant just beneath the surface. And I'll take you on a vivid journey to envision what might happen if this colossal volcano awakens from its slumber. So Campi Flegrei, or called in English the Flegrean field, it's not just a volcano, it's a super volcano. Its massive caldera was formed over 39,000 years ago and it is overdue for an eruption. So picture this, a normal day in Naples. Locals and tourists alike enjoying the Mediterranean charm that this region has. They are completely unaware of the brewing volcano underneath them. The first sign would be seismic activity, ground shaking, windows rattling. Then fear would grip the heart of Naples. A colossal plume of ash would begin to rise from the bowels of the earth. And this isn't just a small eruption, it's the beginning of a major volcanic event. From a bird's eye view, you'd see a monstrous ash cloud billowing into the sky, casting a shadow over Naples. This ash cloud isn't just a spectacle, it's a massive curtain of fine particles spreading across the landscape. So within minutes, the sun would be blotted out and day turns to night. The ash would start to settle over the city like a suffocating blanket. Roofs would begin to strain under the weight of the ashes and the streets would look like eerie gray wastelands. Visibility would be near zero and the air is thick with the smell of sulfur. Breathing becomes a challenge, a real hazard for everyone in the vicinity. As the ash spreads, it travels beyond Na Naples, enveloping nearby towns and eventually cities further away. Air travel over Italy grinds to a halt. The airspace becomes too dangerous to navigate due to the dense ash cloud. But the ash cloud isn't the only problem. Imagine the ground itself would deform. New fissures opening, spewing lava and gases. The very structure of the land could change, with new hills forming and old ones flattening. It's a reshaping of the Earth's face, a testament to nature's indomitable power. So now let's consider the aftermath of this explosion. The region would face a monumental task of recovery. Buildings need to be cleared of ash, infrastructure repaired, and most critically, the air quality restored to livable conditions. The economic and humanitarian impact would stretch far beyond the immediate area, affecting global systems in unpredictable ways, causing food shortages, little ice ages, Agricultural production would be devastated if land is covered by ash. The eruption of Campi Flegrei would be a historic event, a reminder of our planet's raw power and the delicate balance we reside within.
It's a scenario that scientists are meticulously studying to better predict and prepare for, because when dealing with forces of this magnitude, every second of forewarning counts. Because to evacuate an area with over 3 million people, with like an old settlement with narrow roads, old building that would probably already collapse if the earthquakes hit and block the roads, how do you evacuate these people? And people are living right on the caldera and we have an area here naples is engaged between two giant volcanoes vesuvius that has shown in the past how devastating it can be wiping out pompeii and the lesser known but more dangerous caldera and spread it out super volcano campi flegrei so this is an area that's highly at risk vesuvius is overdue for an eruption so what has happened in the last two days there were two noticeable earthquakes that have shook the caldera area in the last two days and people could feel it in a radius of about 20 kilometers away from these two earthquakes that were in the gulf of pozzuoli in the sea their magnitude was 3.7 and 3.6 which is high for a volcanic event if you have like subduction zones or tectonic plate movements they can be higher especially if it's subduction zones but here this is volcanic and the earthquakes happened at depth of 2.6 and 3.7 kilometers. The epicenters were located offshore in the Gulf of Pozzuoli and they occurred in the area of a known fault zone located on the southwestern edge of the caldera. There have already been tremors of comparable magnitude here in the last few weeks already. So this is a reoccurring event and that's why it's scaring people and scientists as well. What is unusual with these two earthquakes, they haven't caused a seismic swarm. So these two earthquakes were isolated. They didn't come with more earthquakes that were in the micro seismic activity. So it could be that this fault zone was activated here as a result of the pressure changes of the Campi Flegri area, as a result of the pressurization of the subsurface in this area because of the volcanic activity. The land rise is still happening and is still going strong. So the latest weekly report for the period of April 29th to May 5th states that the land has risen at a rate of 30 millimeters per month. And in addition to that, there were 155 tremors that were detected and the gas temperature at the Pischiarelli Fumarole in that caldera has increased by one degree to 95 degrees Celsius. So these fumaroles, it's like steam fountains that are coming out of the ground, are an indication they're heated up by the magmatic activity. So if that's getting hotter, does that mean the magma is rising up, coming closer to the surface? And these measurements took part like five meters away from that fumarole. So not directly. So the fumarole is probably much hotter. So it's no surprise that people in the area are becoming more nervous by the day. And now let's talk about the scientist who really scares us with what he says. So he's a professor and he has extensive knowledge. I want to show you his resume here. So Roberto Scandone, he right now is active, works at the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology. So that's the official institute in Italy that observes these volcanoes. The shortcut is INGV and at the Vesuvius Observatory. So that's what he's currently doing, but have a look at what he did all his year. And I only show you a little bit of what he did. These are all the studies that he has worked on and it dates back into the 70s so he has a lot of lot of experience and he has done multiple studies about the Campi Flegre. Um, he has done a study here or a paper from unrest episodes at Campi Flegre, a reconstruction of vertical ground movements during 1905 until 2009 so he's really an expert in what he is doing
So, and as you read here, Roberto Scandona retired from University of Roma Tre and is currently a research associate at the Vesuvius Observatory, the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology. So he does research in volcanology and geophysics. So he's a professor, a retired professor that has worked for the University of Rome as well. And his current project is Unrest at Campi Flegre. And that's why we really should take this guy serious. So he has made a statement in a YouTube live stream or, or like a course that he has given. And he has made this statement there. There is a screenshot of him here in that course. It's in Italian. So um, I can't, doesn't make sense if I show you some sequences of it. But I want to tell you what he said. Because when I heard it, I was like, whoa, that's the first scientist that really speaks it out loud in the open because authorities now they said, yeah, let's rehearse, like re let's rehearse what happens if there is an eruption, but they were basically rehearsing how they would rebuild or what they would do. But now they're understanding, well, we have to kind of have more sophisticated evacuation plans. So they're saying they're working on this. But in reality, if you look at the narrow streets of Naples and the little fishing towns, the old buildings, you would need a warning time of several days and even then it would be difficult. And with these volcanoes, it's usually once the seismic swarm starts, that's when your clock starts ticking. That's your warning time. And that can be as little if we've seen in Iceland as like 30 minutes or less or a few hours it depends on how far the magma needs to go before it reaches the surface if the magma needs to go a long long way it needs to grind tunnels and that's that's why it comes with these earthquake swarms but the problem is it's manifesting more and more and more that the magma chamber that is causing this land rise here and this volcanic activity is only at four kilometers depth. So it won't take long for the magma to reach the surface, maybe five to seven hours, maybe less, depending how brittle and how damaged the crust is. And through that Brady size and that land rise and land subsiding and land rising, we're in the land rising phase right now, the crust gets brittle and makes it even and easier for the magma to reach the surface. So only a few hours warning time would be worst case scenario. It would be devastating, absolutely devastating. So what is he saying? He said magma is already at a depth of four kilometers and it could rise comparatively quickly. And he said, if I had the resources, he would order an evacuation of the region immediately. Immediately. And you know what that tells us? He is an absolute expert. But, you know, does that help the people that live in the area? Because there is plans to evacuate the people in the direct proximity of that volcanic system like Pozzuoli and the, the settlements that are basically right on the calderas. That's roughly like 400,000 people and they're working on evacuation plans, but nothing is finished or they don't really have a decent plan on how to do that and where to put the people. So they were thinking about putting them into neighboring areas or further away, but you know, doing that right now, that would be like catastrophic for the residents. And it's a poor area. So the residents don't have money to pay for hotels or evacuate themselves and saying, well, I better be careful. I'm just leaving. I'll just move somewhere else. They can't. They're living in homes that have been passed on over generations, like apartment buildings, these old stone buildings. They don't have much money. Naples is a poor city as well. So people can't just pack and leave. They don't have the money. They barely can get by where they are right now. So this is like, that's why Yeah, I'm 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 out of words because if he says that this is this is serious 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 and so this region 
sitting between these two volcanoes that could erupt with that many millions of people. If that really happens, it'll be a catastrophe that mankind hasn't seen in our modern times at all. I'll close this video with this. If you want to learn more about this, check out my playlist about Campi Flegre and also Vesuvius. It's very, very interesting. I'll put a few of those videos in the end screen. Thank you for watching, guys. Check out my video about Brazil. Devastating floods there. But still, heroes have tried to rescue animals. I've, I've shown you video footage in this video here in the end screen. It's heart melting and it's heartbreaking what's happening to the people there. So check out this video um, and I'll see you very soon with an update uh, on what's going on in Iceland. Something's going on there as well. So thanks for watching. Please, please leave this video a like. You're helping my channel a lot. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I would like to see you again. Thank you guys. Bye bye.